Non-avian theropods are my favorite group of animals. No shade to birds, they're also freaking awesome. Have you seen shoebills? These ancient two-legged ruling reptiles filled most terrestrial niches that large vertebrates could think of, including herbivores like Therizinosaurus, bone-crunching apex predators like Tyrannosaurus, wee little burrowers like Erectodromius, and fast, lithe group hunters like Albertosaurus. Debates about their behavior, display structures, and evolution keep them fresh and interesting in the sprawl of academia. But if we're being honest with ourselves, a major part of why we love these animals is their sheer scale. To a human, a wolf is a big predator. To something like Allosaurus, a wolf is a snack. Big theropods are cool, and if you're pretending not to be excited about that, then I'd feel sorry for you. Let's drop the paleo reddit more scientific than thou attitude and have some fun. In this video, we'll discuss the absolute maximum size that could possibly be attained by theropod dinosaurs. In order to give that any meaning at all, we'll need a frame of reference. And what better taxon to provide that reference than T. rex itself, the best studied megatheropod? We're going to calculate an average adult size for the Tyrant Lizard King, and use that as a jumping off point. But what does adult mean, and how do we determine it? Most Tyrannosaurus specimens have not had histology done to determine their age, and those that have often display conflicting results. Scotty, for example, was originally thought to be 24, but two morphology-based studies over a decade later yielded 28 and 23 to 27 years respectively. Where do these numbers come from anyway? Lags, or lines of arrested growth, indicate periods of seasonally decreased resources in which the animal slowed its bone deposition rate considerably. These tend to be annual, like growth rings in trees. When those rings are grouped closely together, it's referred to as an EFS, external fundamental system, indicating that the animal has seized significant appositional growth. It's a common practice to refer to animals with an EFS as skeletally mature. Griffin et al. 2020 demonstrated that lags can be deposited in groups, and if multiple lags are close together close to the time of death, the animal could be incorrectly interpreted as an adult. Alternatively, damage to bones could erase an EFS that was present in life, leading to the specimen being labeled skeletally immature. Bone growth rate can also vary between species and even individuals. Fortunately, before an EFS is deposited, there forms a ring of avascular bone that helps identify maturity, making it the most consistent indicator of skeletal growth being essentially complete. B. rex, the pregnant specimen, did not display that ring, indicating that Tyrannosaurus reached sexual maturity before skeletal maturity they were reproducing well before reaching their full adult size. Before we can even think about a maximum, we need to see if an average can be established. Femoral circumference allometry shines here. Obviously, extrapolating mass from a measurement of a single bone is not ideal, but for broad-scale studies like this one, it's a useful proxy of relative size. More precise, holistic, volume-based estimates for Tyrannosaurus would yield masses roughly 27% higher on average, so keep that in mind as we go through the list of plausible skeletally mature Tyrannosaurus. An emphasis will be placed on specimens highlighted as adults in Thomas Carr's 2020 analysis, treating MOR980 as the smallest adult and including every specimen with comparable or larger femur circumference that isn't explicitly listed as not being an adult. When femur measurements conflict, we'll take an average. MOR980, average femur circumference, 489.5 millimeters, allometric mass, 5,303 kilograms, predicted volumetric mass, 6,735 kilograms, BMNH R7994, Dynamosaurus, femur circumference, 490 millimeters, allometric mass, 5,318 kilograms, predicted volumetric mass, 6,753 kilograms, NHMR8001, Femur circumference, 490 millimeters. Allometric mass, 5,318 kilograms. Predicted volumetric mass, 6,753 kilograms. BHI 6230, YREX. Femur circumference, 494 millimeters. Allometric mass, 5,439 kilograms. Predicted volumetric mass, 6,907 kilograms. NH MAD collections, STAN. Average femur circumference, 502.5 millimeters. Allometric mass, 5,700 kilograms. Average volumetric mass, 9,072 kilograms. It's an average of Frenoy, Hutchinson, and Bates realistic soft tissue models. BHI 6435. Femur circumference, 512 millimeters. Allometric mass, 6,002 kilograms. Predicted volumetric mass, 7,623 kilograms. These numbers are identical to BHI 6242, or Henry. BHI 6233. Femur circumference, 515 millimeters. 
allometric mass 6,099 kilograms, predicted volumetric mass 7,756 kilograms. H and Tristan Otto. Femur circumference 520 millimeters. Allometric mass 6,264 kilograms. Predicted volumetric mass 7,955 kilograms. USNM 555,000. Wankel. Average femur circumference 521.7 millimeters. Allometric mass 6,321 kilograms. Actual volumetric mass 8,551 kilograms. That's an average of realistic soft tissue levels from Bates et al. 2009 and Hutchinson et al. 2011 with updated densities. For reference, this mummified model represents only 300 kilograms less than the allometry estimate. This is what circumference allometry does to your children. BHI 6232. Femur circumference 527 millimeters. Allometric mass 6,499 kilograms. Predicted volumetric mass 8,254 kilograms. BHI 6436. Femur circumference 530 millimeters. Allometric mass 6,601 kilograms. Predicted volumetric mass 8,383 kilograms. RGM 792.000. Tricks. Average femur circumference 533.5 millimeters. Allometric mass 6,722.5 kilograms. Predicted volumetric mass 8,538 kilograms. It's worth mentioning that Trix is the smallest T Rex individual with unambiguous evidence of skeletal maturity, if you really want to be parsimonious, which I know isn't a popular position nowadays. TMTV222, Lee. Femur circumference 545 millimeters. Allometric mass 7,129.1 kilograms. Predicted volumetric mass 9,054 kilograms. CM9380. Arwen. Average femur circumference, 555.9 millimeters. Allometric mass, 7,528 kilograms. Average volumetric mass, 8,274 kilograms. Average of Frenoy, Hutchinson et al., and Spino in Wonderland. CMN Collection, Samson. Femur circumference, 560 millimeters. Allometric mass, 7,683 kilograms. Predicted volumetric mass, 9,757 kilograms. BDM Collection, Bertha. Femur circumference 570 plus millimeters. The restored is slightly larger, but not by a lot, and I don't have permission to share those numbers yet. Allometric mass 8,066.4 kilograms. Predicted volumetric mass 10,244 kilograms. RSMP 2523.8. Scotty. Average femur circumference 580 millimeters. Allometric mass 8,462 kilograms. Volumetric mass 10,456 kilograms. MOR 1128, G-Rex. Average femur circumference, 585.5 millimeters. Allometric mass, 8,685 kilograms. Predicted volumetric mass, 11,030 kilograms. This enormous specimen isn't skeletally mature given its lack of an EFS. While predicting a final body size is fruitless, it shows that there's a great degree of individual variation in maturation rate. FMNH PR 2081, SU. Femur circumference, 580 millimeters. Allometric mass, 8462 kilograms. Average volumetric mass, 9544 kilograms. This is, however, likely far too low. A detailed 3D scan-based reconstruction of Sue is taking place down to the individual muscles that demonstrates that Sue actually surpasses Scotty in most measurements and is only seen as smaller due to inconsistency in how measurement standards are reported by paleontologists. As a result, around 11 tons should be regarded as the floor for Sue, with the ceiling somewhat higher. XBHI 6248, COPE. Famer circumference, 630.3. Allometric mass, 10,640 kilograms. Predicted volumetric mass, 13,513 kilograms. The 11.7 ton figure is likely much closer, since we do have more material that gives us an overall idea of COPE's size. 13 ton COPE is not a thing. Stick with 11 to 11.7 and you should be safe. BHI Collections, Goliath. Femur circumference, 647.7 millimeters. Allometric mass, 11,469 kilograms. Predicted volumetric mass, 14,566 kilograms. I would not recommend taking this predicted volumetric mass seriously, as the more holistic femoral volume methodology yields between 12.3 and 12.9 tons, scaling from recent analyses of Sue and Scotty. Remember, that relationship is mainly to demonstrate the trend of how allometry underestimates, but I am not arguing for a Goliath over 13 tons. Don't take this out of context. I know some of you will, and you'll get what you deserve. Going back to the circumference-based estimates, what does this get us? Assuming our pool of Tyrannosaurus specimens consists entirely of skeletally mature individuals that have ceased growing, which we know is not true given that most of them lacked an EFS, 
Allometry would predict the average full-grown T-Rex is massing 7,077 kilograms. For reference, the same formula predicts 6,260 kilograms for the Giganotosaurus holotype and the biggest Tyranotitan specimen. Again, take that ratio with a hefty sprinkling of salt. Remember that different theropods have different body proportions, and these allometric estimates are all unrealistically low. Volumetrically, you'd expect our average rex to be around 8,988 kilograms using this methodology. If you constrain adults to mean only those with definite signs of skeletal maturity, it would be an average of Trix, Scotty, Bertha, Sue, and Cope. Goliath hasn't had histology done, but you'd be insane to say it wasn't skeletally mature. Averaging the allometry for that crowd yields 8,970 kilograms, predicting a volumetric mass of 11,392 kilograms. I'll say right now I think that second number is far too high, but that's just what you get from multiplying by average disparity. It's more of a thought experiment than anything. The next time you see somebody definitively stating that T-Rex is on average bigger than Giga, you'll know that they might be right. The same goes for somebody who claims that Giga is on average bigger than Rex. Neither side has the statistical strength to sway me. One thing I can admit though is that T-Rex undoubtedly lays claim to the biggest theropod specimens. Sue, Goliath, and Cope are all quite a bit larger than even the higher estimates for the Giga Chin if we want to compare the biggest specimens. What does this all mean in terms of the biggest theropod ever though? Malin and Hone 2024 was a study that made the internet buzz with speculation. Titled Estimation of Maximum Body Size in Fossil Species, a Case Study Using Tyrannosaurus Rex, their analysis used a large modern archosaur, the American alligator, to predict the population curve and maximum size of the best known megatheropod, T. rex itself. They predicted that out of a theoretical population of 140 million tyrant lizard kings, the largest specimen would be 70% larger than the largest then known, which they regarded as an 8.8 ton allometrically calculated Scotty. That resulted in a 15,000 kilogram beast, purely hypothetical, which we'll call Imperator. Interestingly, the team arrived at a typical asymptotic mass for T-Rex of 7,852 kilograms using femur circumference allometry and documented growth curves, indicating that individuals between the size of Samson and G-Rex are what we'd expect of a typical fully grown adult. Our volumetric prediction then would result in an average asymptotic rex of 9,657 kilograms. It's good to include more methodologies, isn't it? Their version included a bigger sample size than ours and accounted for growth rate, so the adjusted 9.6 ton figure is likely much better than the 11.3 we calculated earlier. Let's break down the hypothetical max. If you've been watching the channel for a while or paid any attention during this video, you'll know that femur circumference allometry is a useful tool that usually underestimates bipeds. The most detailed estimates for Scotty use reconstructed skeletal models and yield around 10.4 tons, give or take. Multiply that by 1.7 and suddenly the biggest hypothetical rex is 17.8 tons. But Scotty isn't the biggest rex we have. Far from it. Throw Cope or Goliath into the mix and suddenly you're looking at a monster of 19.9 to 21.4 tons. Goofy numbers, of course. I can't think of an ecological pressure that would have created bipedal terrestrial predators of such vast dimensions, and this study does not at all account for the biomechanical or energetic restraints that would have discouraged carnivores from reaching these sizes. The muscle mass required to move such a colossal biped would be staggering, but that would be secondary compared to the calories burned just by taking a single step. Now remember, this population study used Tyrannosaurus thanks to its relatively well understood life history and large sample size, but the concept applies to all theropods. It just as easily gives you 15 ton megacarks and 13 ton spinosaurids, and it's just as speculative. Understanding the absolute size ceiling of a species is freaking awesome, but it isn't terribly useful and doesn't lead to a highly nuanced understanding of the organism's evolutionary placement. It can, however, help us understand the necessary density of prey items needed in its environment in order to meet minimum calorie requirements, as well as predict trophic levels based on relative body mass of predators. It's also useful for you spec evo people out there. Yeah, I'm looking at you. Just don't go pretending that every T-Rex was some monstrous 21 ton murder beast. Around 9.6 tons is where you should be placing average skeletally mature individuals, and anything over 13 tons had better have a darn good explanation. Until we find a Tyrannosaurus specimen in that size range, of course. With the way the last few years have gone, that will likely be within the decade. If you like megatheropods, you'll probably enjoy my recent videos on Goliath and the Megatheropod Roundup for 2025, or the series placing megatheropods into different continents in the Cenozoic to see how they can survive the age of mammals. Let me know what you'd like to see more of in the comments, and thank you to all the channel members who support me and make it easier for me to pursue YouTube and novel writing full time. A huge thank you goes to Table Seating, whose research and information gathering skills were crucial in making this video happen. I appreciate you all, and remember, Big dinosaurs are cool. It's okay to think that. I'm the Vividen, and I'll see you next time.